In this episode of Good, Better, Best, we take a look at three double-din head units with wired and wireless, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We'll go over all the features, benefits, pros and cons, and then we'll fire them up for a demo. So if you're in the market for a radio with wireless smartphone integrations, then stick around. Hey, what's up? Josh here from Breakers Stereo and Performance. Thanks for joining us and welcome to the channel that reviews all the best in car audio, suspension, performance, and more, because we don't job stock. And if you're like us, where stock doesn't cut it, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Okay, it's been almost two years since we did our first Good Better Best Double Din Radio with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto video. But since wireless smartphone connection is more common, we decided to do this category. When it comes to our Good Better Best series, we use a combination of factors to determine which car audio head units to include by considering the features, performance, compatibility, popularity, and of course, the price of each head unit. Now we do our best to provide our potential clients, which is all you guys, a comprehensive and informative guide to choosing the right head unit. And these are the three price ranges. Good, under $300, better, under $500, and best, no limit. So here are our choices for the double din head units with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto for 2023. First up, our good choice, the Boss BE920 WCPA. I know, it's a mouthful. Coming in at $299. Better, the Kenwood DMX 8709S. Current retail price, $499. And the best, Alpine ILX-507, which was $749, but had a price reduction and now currently retails for $649. So on all of these, we'll be talking about key features and functionality, then we'll demo each one, and finally, we'll go over the pros and cons. So let's get it started. Starting with the Boss BE 920 WCPA. Now this is a digital multimedia receiver with AM FM tuner and no CD. Plays Bluetooth, USB, SD, MP3, WAV, WMA, and FLAC files up to 24-bit high resolution audio. This is a seven inch capacitive touchscreen, 800 by 480, and fits in double din openings. Smartphone features include, of course, wired and wireless, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Built-in Bluetooth for hands-free calling and audio streaming. Audio and video features include USB memory devices. This has a USB input that supports both audio and video. EQ and preset curves, rear and front camera inputs, and has a five channel, two volt pre-out. Front, rear, and mono sub. Built-in amplifier is 20 watts RMS times four, and then also compatible with most steering wheel adapters, adapters sold separately. And this has an unbelievable five year warranty. Again, current retail price, $299. Next, the Kenwood DMX8709S. Also a digital multimedia player with AM FM tuner, no CD. Plays media loaded with MP3, WMA, AAC files, plus high res WAV and FLAC files up to 24 bit, 192 kilohertz. This has a 6.75 capacitive touchscreen with HD display. Electronic viewing angle display adjustment. And of course this fits in double in openings. Smartphone features include wired and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Google Assist voice control when using an Android, and Siri voice control when using an iPhone. And this does have an HDMI input, so if you want to mirror your iPhone or Android, you can do so, but the adapter is sold separately. Wired USB mirroring for select Android devices, and USB video playback supports high resolution, MPEG-2, MPEG-4, up to 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. Built-in Bluetooth with dual phone connection and rapid Android charging via the USB port. This has a 13-band EQ, time alignment, drive EQ and digital processing, along with three-way crossovers. Expandability includes series XM tuner ready, tuner sold separately, and steering wheel control ready, adapter sold separately. This also has a rear analog AV input that can be converted into a third camera. RCA outputs include six channel, four volt, front, rear, and sub preouts. Now this is 22 watts times four RMS or 50 watts times four peak. Also works with iData Maestro RR or RR2 modules. That will retain factory features and a wide selection of vehicles, displaying engine performance, and much more. And this has a one year warranty. Current retail price, $499. And in our best position is the Alpine ILX-507. 
This is a seven inch capacitive touchscreen with the high resolution screen, 1280 by 720. Has an HD radio built in, Bluetooth for hands-free calling and music streaming. Smartphone features include Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, wired and wireless. Audio video playback on the USB include MP3, WMA, AAC, APE, FLAC files, MP4, MPEG4, and movie video files. Plays lossless FLAC audios up to 96 kilohertz, 24 bit. And this has a 13 band parametric EQ, both left and right. Six channel time correction, high and low pass filters, Alpine's proprietary base engine SQ, along with the Media Expander HD. This will also work with Series XM, tuner sold separately, and is steering wheel control ready, adapter sold separately. This has two rear USB ports, and also a rear HDMI input, and an HDMI output. Front and rear camera inputs, and the RCA preouts are six channel, four volt front, rear, and subwoofer. Now this has an internal amplifier rated at 16 watts times four, and that is CTA rated, and 50 watts times four peak. Also, IdataLink Maestro compatible with the RR or RR2. And this comes with a one year warranty. And now currently retails for $649. All right, so let's fire these things up and check them out. If you're familiar with Boss, this is the home screen that they have on all their seven inch double din radios. So nothing new here. We have our sources, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Bluetooth tuner, USB, SD card, and then you do have an AV input and that is a composite. We have your camera, you can go to right there. Also Bluetooth streaming, and then your equalizer and your setup. All right, so let's go to setup really quick. All right, here you have your general. This goes over your language, zone, time, and so forth. Let's go into audio. Here we have balance fade, subwoofer on or off. And then you also have a subwoofer filter. So there's only a subwoofer filter or subwoofer crossover on this radio. It does not look like it has crossovers for your front and rear speakers. But on your subwoofer filter, you can go as low as 50 and as high as 160. Then you have your subwoofer level. Let's go to EQ. Here you have a 10 band EQ. You can fully adjust this. Okay. And then there's also some presets here as well. Next, loudness. You can turn the internal amplifier on or off. Default volume and source level. Okay, next we have display. So we have illumination control, gamma day, gamma night, night brightness, UI settings there. But let's go into this really quick. Now what I'm seeing is on the screen, the screen is not the greatest in the world, obviously. Again, it's a $299 radio. The blacks are not really deep and the whites are not crisp. But let's go ahead and try to adjust this a little bit, okay? So let's go see what we can get here. All right, so that's actually much better. All right, so if we just control the gamma day, definitely darker on the black and the white is a little bit cleaner. Nice, okay, so that's not bad. All right, so let's kind of adjust the brightness. And it looks like that's all that we have. There's no color or anything like that. So we're a little bit limited, but I can say this, it's, it's much better if you adjust the display once you get it, because the default uh, doesn't look that great. All right, next, Bluetooth settings there. On this one, you do have front and rear camera, so you can set your rear camera up here and also your front camera up here. Okay, then you have your parking adjust guide, turn that on or off, and then you're able to adjust the guidelines here. And then we have a rear view delay. You can set that up. Uh, you can have a delay or you can just have it come on immediately, which most people will probably want to do. All right, so let's check out the smartphone features here. So it looks like we have to pair the smartphone first. Okay. So we're pairing it up via Bluetooth first. All right, so there you go. There's our Android Auto. We have the split screen going on here. You have our navigation here and then whatever we're listening to on the right-hand side. If we tap here, that will go into all of our sources that we're able to work with. Now I can say this, it does seem a little bit slow. Okay, so it's not quite as quick. That's because it is a $299 radio. We can't expect it to be as quick as some of the other ones we're gonna be taking a look at today. Okay, let's go ahead and try the wireless. As you can see, we've got the wire hooked up right now. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug that and that should just still stay there which it does, so that's good. So once it's paired up via Bluetooth and you have a wired connection put in, it should grab the wireless connection. All right, so let's go ahead and check out Apple CarPlay. All right, so it looks like it's asking you to do the same thing. So let's go ahead and pair the phone. All right, so there's CarPlay. All right, so here we have our ways on the left-hand side, music on the right, hit the bottom on the left. This will give us all our sources here for mapping, music, and also communication apps. All right, so most of you guys are familiar with this. I'm not gonna necessarily go over that. All right, as far as the wireless connection is concerned, I'm just go ahead and unplug this and we should be good to go. 
which we are. Okay, so that's good. So again, just plug in your phone, pair it, and then you're fine. You're good to go. Then the wireless feature will be activated. So on this radio for $299, I'm pretty impressed. The screen looks pretty good for what it is. It's not super duper quick, but I think it's quick enough. But for a double-din radio with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto, it's pretty good. That's why we chose this as our good selection. Okay, so this is the initial setup screen. Here you can select demonstration language, front camera, rear camera. You can also get into these a little bit later too. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit finish. All right, so that's our home screen. We have our sources here on the bottom and we can change these around if we want, no problem. If you tap this matrix here, this will take you to all your sources. So you have your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Bluetooth, telephone, USB, radio series XM, USB mirroring, but that will only be for Android and then your HDMI input. Okay, let's go into setup really quick and let's check that out. So here we have our audio. Let's start with EQ. All right, so you have a 14 band EQ. This is a graphic equalizer. You have some presets here, so you can select different ones. Also, you have a user, so you can customize this if you like. On this menu, you do have your subwoofer level along with your bass extension. All right, going back, we have sound effect. Here we have our loudness, bass boost, drive EQ, realizer, and then stage EQ. Now here you can select on the staging for the front if you want it to be either low in the middle or high, adjust accordingly. Then we have balance and fade. And then here's our crossovers. When you go into crossovers, it'll take you into your car settings. From here, you can select what type of vehicle you have, whether it be a compact, full-size wagon, minivan, SUV, okay, or a bigger van, or a minivan long. All right, so we'll just go ahead and select SUV. Then we can select the positioning or the location of the speakers, either lower door, on dash, under dash, okay? You can also select the size of the speaker, okay? from three and a half all the way up to seven by 10. Then on the Twitter, you can select either middle, small, or large. Here is the crossover. So from here, we can select Twitter gain. Okay, and when it goes to the negative and then the overall gain, again, only in the negative, then we can select our crossover, okay? So we have between 30 Hertz and 250, and then our slope can range from six dB per octave up to 24. Now you can also do that with the rear and the subwoofer as well. Next, we have time alignment. From here, you can do just the front left seat or front focus along with priority to the left. Now, if you wanna get in here and adjust it, tap that there and then you can set time alignment and you can do either by distance or gain. If you do distance, you measure from the center of the speaker to the driver's side headrest on each speaker, including the subwoofer, or you can just do gain where you can just attenuate certain speakers to give it a more equal sound. Let's go to display next. So from here, you can adjust the background. So you have a couple of different backgrounds that you have here, or you can upload one on your own through the USB. Okay, the next important thing is the home adjustment. So from here, you can adjust. If you wanna switch that source to a different source that you use more often, you can do so. Then you have screen adjustment. And here you can adjust the contrast, brightness, color, and tint. And then here you also have viewing angle. So here you can adjust the viewing angle depending on the pitch and the dash. Next we have input, so you have our front camera input, our rear camera input. You can select those to be on or off and then with interruption or non-interruption. All right, and then finally system. All right, let's check out the smartphone integration. All right, so there's our Apple CarPlay screen. And as far as the wireless is concerned, what you're gonna wanna do is here they're asking on your phone if you wanna enable CarPlay, you just hit yes. All right, and then you'd have to go into your Wi-Fi setting to make sure that's hooked up, and then you're good to go. All right, all right, let's go ahead and check out Android Auto. All right, so just plug it in first, unlock it, follow the instructions on the phone. So the Bluetooth is paired, and we're good to go. All right, so that's Android Auto. I'm not gonna get into it, we already kind of talked about that. And as far as the wireless is concerned, same thing, go into your Wi-Fi, select the Kenwood radio. From here, it's gonna ask you for the password. This is a little bit of a pain to do, but you gotta go back to the Kenwood home screen, then go to settings, setup, system, scroll down to you get to connection setup, hit enter, and then go down, and you're gonna go to Wi-Fi setup, and your password's here on the bottom. All right, and then connect. Okay, and then from there, we should be good. Okay, so that's how that's done. All right, let's go and take a look at the HDMI input on this radio. Okay, so on the HDMI, this is a micro HDMI input. So you wanna get a micro HDMI to standard HDMI input. If you're using an iPhone, it's gonna go from HDMI to lightning cable. If it is an Android, then you go on HDMI to USB-C. So I'm gonna use my iPhone right now. I'm gonna go 
back here and select HDMI. All right, and then from here it's asking me, do I want to use Wi-Fi or HDMI? I'm going to select HDMI, hit OK. All right, and then from here, as you can see, that's me lounging right there. And that is my iPhone. And let's go ahead and play some Netflix. All right, so we reviewed the DMX 809S last week, and I did say this, the screen is not extremely impressive out of the box. So you do have to go in here and adjust the picture. And I like that they have the ability to go to adjust picture right on the screen. You don't have to go into the menu and do it. What I don't like is you can't adjust these settings while the picture is going, you know, when it gives you this color screen here. So from what I remember, I believe I turned the brightness down. Okay. I gave it a bunch of color and I think it was pretty good after that. So definitely much better there. All right, so that's the USB input. Now on the HDMI input, you are limited on the picture quality that comes into this. I'm not sure why they did it this way, because if you're running a USB input, you can download movies onto the USB and play them through the screen and the resolution is better. Okay, this is our main menu here. As you can see, we have our sources. We have radio, USB, HDMI, Sirius XM, auxiliary um, input, both audio and video, Bluetooth audio, uh, music, and then we have that title right there. Now the title, on the bottom we have phone, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and setup. I'm gonna go into the audio setup first. In order to get to that, you see there's a blue arrow here. Just go ahead and tap that arrow. That'll bring up our sound menu, okay? Starting with balance and fade. You have a couple different functions. Your balance and fade is here. Uh, you can turn your subwoofer on or off. And then here you have your EQ settings. I'm gonna get into this right now, but you also have crossovers and time correction. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about EQ settings. All right, so this is a parametric EQ, meaning you can pick the frequency in which you wanna boost. Okay, so right now I'm still on my first band. I can pick the frequency in which I wanna boost. All right, and then I can adjust it here. And then I can also uh, select the Q. And as you can see, that will widen or narrow the frequency in which we're boosting. If you notice here, you have front left, front right, rear left, rear right, and subwoofer. So each of these channels has their own separate equalizer all right so basically all right so you can see i'm adjusting here on the rear left and if i hit rear right then that goes down because that's a different eq so each channel has their own individual eq if you didn't watch the video that we did on the ilx f509 or the 511 i encourage you to watch that because we go over the importance of having both left and right eqing but i'll give you the cliff notes basically what it is is this when you set up staging in your vehicle time alignment is key but so is separate EQing left and right. And the reason why that's important is because the car environment is different than let's say a home environment or a studio environment because the driver sits to the left and the speaker distance is not equal. Now that covers time alignment. Now when it comes to other things like the environment that it's in, such as the things that are in the vehicle, like let's say the seat, that's a, sometimes that can be in the way, that will have a direct effect on how frequencies are perceived from the driver's seat. In order to do this properly, you do need an RTA. In order to adjust these things, you can buy a simple one from Audio Control for about 200 bucks that hooks to your smartphone. Okay, that's gonna be kind of the extent of it. I wanna to get too into it, but it definitely is one of these things where you don't get these features on a lot of radios. Alpine is one of the only one that offers it and they do offer it in this doubled in radio that we're looking at here. And just as a side note, normally front, rear, left and right EQing is only reserved for DSP units. And then you do have a separate one, two, three, four band equalizer for your subwoofer as well. All right, let's talk about crossovers next. All right, so from here you can select the frequency, also the slope from six to 24, just like the Kenwood. And the range is between 20 and 250 okay so you have front rear and sub there all right let's talk about time correction and this one's also set up by distance or milliseconds okay okay next let's talk about media expander now the media expander is designed to work if you're using compressed music and you want to basically kind of fill in the gaps again i talk about this on the ilx w511 and 509 video so go and check that out uh, but you do have a couple different adjustments here you have either one two or three so just use accordingly. Okay, EQ setup, we already talked about that. Crossover, we already talked about that. With the base engine EQ, you can only use this if you're not using the media expander. Now on the base engine EQ, basically these are preset EQ curves with levels from one to six, okay? The standard, there's a mid bass curve, rich curve, low bass curve, punch curve. So those are the ones that you have available to you. All right, and then we already talked about time correction. 
All right, let's get into the setup really quick. All right, from here you have your device function and systems. I'm just gonna kind of go over what's key here. Installation status is nice. So here you can check on any accessories that you have hooked to this radio to make sure that they're function, functioning correctly. If not, um, it will let you know. Okay, so that is definitely a nice feature. Okay, there's function and then systems, okay? Here you can adjust the color or the background of the screen so that is available to you. Okay, and also the screen lighting settings as well. Here's the software information. So from here you can check what software you're currently running and then you can always go to Alpine's website to check to see if you have the latest. If not, you can update it from the screen by downloading the firmware onto a USB and uploading it from the screen. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at Apple CarPlay. Now, as far as pairing is concerned, I'm not gonna plug it in. This time all I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna go to Bluetooth. Okay, I'm gonna scan for a device. I'm gonna add device here, make it a little easier. Okay, uh, what we're looking for is Alpine DA. All right, I found my phone. From here it's asking, okay, confirm, yes. Okay, device is paired. Start, okay, yes. Connecting and then use CarPlay. All right, there it is. Very easy to do, just go into Bluetooth. As easy as it would be, let's say, just Bluetoothing your phone to your standard radio. So, excellent. Okay, on here I can say this though, the screen is excellent. Uh, this is a high pixel count HD display, so that's to be expected. It's bright, it's clean. I don't see any pixelation whatsoever on this. So really happy with the way this looks, and it's very quick, so excellent. No lag, so awesome job. All right, let's go and do Android Auto. I'm just do wireless as well. So I'm gonna go here, quick to set up, device list, and then I wanna add a new device. And we'll go on my phone, and I'm gonna look for Alpine DA, just like the last time, it's right here on the bottom. And I'll search here again. Okay, and there's Android Auto. All right, there you go, piece of cake. All right, let's go ahead and check out the HDMI input on this. Okay, right off the bat, very sharp image. Go ahead and see if we can adjust this a little bit, but I am definitely happy with the way this looks. It has a high pixel count, so definitely you can expect it to be as sharp as it is. All right, so if we can go into setup here, and unlike the camera, you are able to adjust the brightness, the contrast, all while the video is playing, so you can make your adjustments instead of having to guess. So this is definitely looking much better. Pulling the contrast up, it's nice, it's vivid, let's give it a little more color. Maybe that's too much. Okay, so the color, there's not a lot of adjustment. It's basically either zero, one, or two. Maybe a little less contrast. All right, there it is, very happy with that picture. Okay, that will conclude it. All right, time for some pros and cons. Now keep in mind, all this is relative to price. Now I'm not gonna be dogging the boss for not having HDMI inputs and things like that. Also, I won't mention wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto as a pro. All right, cons on the boss. Now I think they should have had a high pass filter, but that's about it. And pros, a five year warranty, also, obviously, the price at $299 for a wireless smartphone integration head unit. It's tough to beat that. Now the Kenwood. Cons. The user interface doesn't seem that great at $499. I would have liked to see something a little bit nicer, and also, it is a little slow. Pros. But this is also kind of a con as well. It has an HDMI input, which is a pro, but con because it only plays back 480. But it will support high resolution video playback on the USB, so that's a pro. Four volt pre-op, iDataLink Maestro compatible, and last, high res 24-bit 192 kilohertz playback on the USB. And now our choice for the best, the Alpine ILX 507. Now cons, now only one because it doesn't support 192 kilohertz. Now the average user will get by with the 96 kilohertz, which this head unit will do, but it definitely would have been nice to have that. Pros, HDMI input with 720p playback and HDMI output also with 720p playback. High resolution screen, 1280 by 720. Built in HD radio, four volt preout, iDataLink Maestro compatible, and all the sound processing that comes with this radio. Okay, that'll do it. Now, regardless of your budget, any of these radios are a great choice. For more information or to purchase one of these radios, we'll leave links in the description below, taking you directly to the product page. Now, remember, we do have financing available. Simply add to cart, pick a financing option, get approved, and we'll send your gear out to you ASAP. Okay, again, my name is Josh with Breaker Stereo and Performance. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.